Hey folks, it's Nate. It's time I got back to the drawing board, and tonight we're looking at Punchline Volume 2, Super Frenemies. Uh, this is the one I actually backed when I got Volume 1, and I am glad to say this is a better story than uh, Volume 1 was. And I, I'm happy to say that because I do like the work that Williams and Weldon did in Volume 1, and um, I wanted to like the franchise overall, and... This is, I think, what sold me on at least collecting the next volume and seeing how I like that. So, let's talk about this this book. Um, it is going to go a lot faster because, like I said, with Volume 1, this is standard iconic uh, publishing uh, trade paperback. It's got good binding. It's got good cover stock. It's got good interior pages. There's not a whole lot more to say about that. I did notice um, there are like a couple of pages that have uh, problems with the ink. Um, you can I don't know if you can even see that. It's a very minor issue, um, just some splotching on one or two pages. And I should probably reach out to them and see if I can get a replacement. Uh, but it's it's not an issue throughout the book. Uh, so I, I think it's just a, a printer issue that wasn't caught before it was sent out. No big deal there. Um, <clears throat> so the art, again, it's primarily Matthew Weldon. Um, there are some guest pencils by Gardino Lima. Lima. I don't know which it is. Sorry if I butchered your name, as I undoubtedly did. Uh, but this art is very good, doesn't have any of the issues with stiffness that I mentioned um, or occasional weird panel-to-panel -panel transitions or weird composition. All that is gone and that's good and uh, it is just really great art. Um, it continues to have that uh, occasional anime face. Let me see if I can find an example. Um, you, will, you will occasionally see somewhat goofy expressions like that. Um, or like that, and if that, if straying into that comical overreaction like that bothers you, even if it's rare, um, this may not be your book. Uh, but honestly, given the overall quality of the art, um, well, for starters, that kind of thing doesn't bother me at all, and given the overall quality of the art, I don't see why anyone would write the book off just for that. Um, so this book is, I think, where Punchline really hits its stride. Story-wise, it doesn't tell you why the book is called Punchline still. And yes, I, I still kind of have something caught in my craw about that. But it's a much better story. Um, just in terms of getting you invested in the characters and getting you invested in the stakes, the emotional stakes... Uh, behind them. Um, so on the cover, you see a lot of people who show up in this book and several people who don't. Um, Rags is not in this book. Uh, Penelope, Usagi, and Patriot R are not in this book. Uh, actually, Blue Beetle is not, or not Blue Beetle, Beetle Girl <laughs> is not in this book. Uh, but there are a lot of other superheroes introduced in this book. Maybe even too many. Again, um, this punchline is a story that moves very fast and it throws a lot of characters at you in this volume and you don't really build an investment in any of them, which is unfortunate. Um, I would have liked to see Beetle Girl come back and built up a little bit more, um, have a better relationship with Versema, um, and that doesn't happen. Black Arrow is in this book. Um, but again, he's in here very briefly. And we were told in Volume 1 that he's actually two people that share the same costume. So I'm not even sure we saw the same Black Arrow in this book as in the previous one. Um, and I don't know if Williams introduced that idea to introduce that kind of uncertainty in us as we were reading it or what. If that was your goal, Bill, mission accomplished. Because I just have so many questions and I would like to get them answered soon. Um, however, my other questions from Volume 1 did get answered in this, so that's good. Um, we get an idea of what Versema's home life is like. She comes from an intact family. 
amazing. Yeah, I know. But um, she comes from an intact family, except her older brother overdosed. It doesn't mean a normal family. One of the things we learn is that uh, her father is actually an ex-henchman, so that was fun. Um, of course, the, the first thing that has to be addressed is um, Mel and Jesse have to be brought back together again because it's too early in the story for them to have a significant departure from each other. And this is why I said in my review of the last volume that splitting them up at the end of the first volume felt like it was it was a nothing burger. And lo and behold, it didn't go anywhere. Um, so, again, I wasn't a fan of that part. But uh, Mel does go to... Um, does go to Jesse's house, the McGrath residence. Uh, she meets Mel, uh, Jesse's parents, and it's um, it's an interesting setup for some things that happen later. Um, there's not really a through arc to this issue of Punchline. Uh, it's basically Versema um, going around and doing things and meeting um, other superheroes in the world, except for the guest issue. Um, the, the issue with the guest artist. And it seems to be the convention that guest artists mean um, a male-centric storyline. Uh, so here's some of the guest art. And it's, it's just as good as um, Matt Weldon, in my opinion. Um, and this, again, uh, the protagonist is Mel rather than Jesse slash Brusema. And, um, but the, the thing is, each of these stories introduces a new superhero or a new super person because uh, we get introduced to this world's Elon Musk in the last one. Terrence Khan is his name. Uh, as you can see, he's a pretty slick looking guy. Uh, he does a lot of technologically focused stuff. Um, he seems like a cool guy that will be uh, important later. And that's really what it feels like going through here. Um, most of these stories are introducing people who will be important later. And that's fine. Um, we get more through these stories. We get more of an idea of um, who Jesse is as a person. Um, we get a better idea of what her home life is like. Um, of course, we get the revelation about uh, her father. And we also get introduced to a potential rival um, in the form of uh, this girl here who has a really weird dress. Um, it looks like this. I can't remember if she gives her name. Um, she's actually been brought here from, uh, oh yeah, Rose Vera Arkyle. So she's been brought here from a parallel reality. That's neat. I like that kind of thing to be thrown in every now and then. There's just a lot of good action adventure stuff in here again, as with the first volume. Um, the Atomic Butterfly is a superhero who seems to work for the mayor. The mayor's potentially corrupt, but AB seems like a pretty good gal. Um, of course, there's the second run-in with Black Arrow. Black Arrow expresses some romantic interest in Versema, which uh, very rapidly gets tabled when he realizes it's just a kid underneath all that costume. Um, again, there's a lot of quick comings and goings, and we don't really dig into any of these characters. Uh, so it's hard to tell who's going to be important going forward and who's not. What is important going forward is we learn a little bit more about Mel as well. Um, she actually meets a superhero all on her lonesome by the name of Golden Girl. And um, we learn that, um, for starters, she's affiliated with a suit group or team of superheroes that is pretty influential and well-respected, the Daughters of Hercules. And this is the magical source of her powers. Um, there are expectations put on the Daughters of Hercules. Um, they're ex expected to pass their powers on. I'm not sure what prompts that passage other than uh, higher-ups in the order um, force people to. Uh, and then they pass on to the afterlife, uh, except Mel doesn't do that. Um, she kind of marks a break with tradition, and she's going to be mentoring uh, Jesse instead of passing on. Uh, in the meantime, Jesse is going to... Um, be facing a trial, which is what we learn at the end. Um, she's going to have to do something to be officially acknowledged as a daughter of Hercules. Here we see some of the other daughters, uh, and here we see 
what presumably is her trial. Versema's going to have to fight a dragon, and that's going to be pretty rad. Let's not kid ourselves. Um, so, all in all, this is the setup of the world that I really wanted in Volume 1. I wanted an understanding of um, who Mel's order was, um, what the nature of the powers were, and what they were to be used for, all of which was hinted at in Volume 1, but we never got. And I really appreciate this volume for, for doing a lot of that groundwork laying work that I wanted in Volume 1. And again, I would like to have this before we did a split storyline um, where, where our protagonists go their separate ways. And maybe even we could have seen them on their own for a while. I mean, that seems to be part of what Williams is doing. You know, he has a at least one issue that focuses on Mel uh, and when she, where she is separate from Jesse. Uh, and you could even, you know, lean into that more if you had done a split later. Um, I think the fact that we've already had a split now makes it very hard to justify doing another one down the road. And I think that's really a missed opportunity because um, when characters have these um, relationship issues that they then need to go and sort out on their own, it really lets us get an idea of who the character is uh, when everyone else isn't around. But um, what we have what we have, and what we have is pretty good. Uh, if I had one complaint, I would have liked to see um, at least one of these newly introduced characters stick around for more than one chapter or one issue, uh, as it was as an ongoing comic, because I would have liked to get to know them a little bit better as well. Um, there's, you know, when a new uh, side character is introduced, every volume it makes it hard to build a sense of continuity it makes it hard to build a sense of really knowing who these characters are and that's something i would really like as williams continues to build out the punchline world which seems like a really interesting world but what we got isn't bad um and i i do want to read more but what i would really like to see as the comic goes on is for some more development to these side characters so we have more touchstones um to measure jesse and mel against because when you just have two data points it's really hard to get an idea of the bigger picture um, if you're just constantly measuring them against each other and you have no other frame of reference um, it gets pretty boring but, so far, um, this has still managed to entertain pretty well, and if you can solve that problem in the characterization, uh, I think this will be a really great story. And I hope to see that in Volume 3. Anyway, that's all I got for tonight. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, there's a like button and subscribe button down below. Uh, you can comment if you want. And I'll talk to you later.